Go with me in your Bibles to Psalms 23. Psalms 23, if you could. Hallelujah. Psalms 23. This is a very, very familiar portion of Scripture. Most of you probably had to recite this uh, in Sunday school. <laughs> And you probably memorized it and learned it by heart. Um, we're going to just read the entire 23rd Psalms and we're going to get out your way and teach a little bit. Um, we're still dealing in our series of wholeness. Uh, the Bible says this. It said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The word of the Lord is blessed. Amen in the house. Um, also, for those of you who have not uh, shared, don't forget to share uh, today's broadcast um, with your Facebook friends. Uh, for those that are watching, God bless you wherever you are. I pray that the service is blessing you. Um, so we're in Psalms 23, and we're not going to be long today. Um, we're still in our series on wholeness. How many of you all have been learning anything in our series about wholeness? If you've been here, you've been fellowshipping with us, If you have you been learning anything? Anything? Have you been blessed? Amen. Amen. And so our uh, focus is uh, to uh, deal with this subject of wholeness. Uh, we believe that one of the outcomes of being a Christian or being a part of the body of Christ uh, should be that we uh, begin to walk in wholeness or that we begin to uh, be in the process of wholeness. Um, we desire to grow and we desire for God to plant us uh, in a situation where uh, we have a wholeness. And so that is what we're believing God for. And so today, as I was looking through this text, um, I began to just see this text in a totally different way. Um, as an adult, this text reads very different than it did in Sunday school. Amen. Uh, as an adult and as uh, going through different things in life, when we look at this text, it is actually um, a, a total explanation of the wholeness of God. It is uh, the keys to fruitful and a whole life uh, in literally six verses. In six verses, it gives us a full explanation of, of what God wants for his people. Say amen. 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 And so we start in verse number one. I'm just going to walk down these scriptures and then I'm going to let you go. Uh, the first scripture says, the Lord is my shepherd. Say shepherd. That means he's your protector. He's your guide. He watches over you. Amen. His, his, his perspective and his job and his assignment is to ensure that the wolves don't scatter the sheep. Amen. His job is to ensure uh, that the sheep stay together, that they stay unified, that they have enough to eat. Amen. Uh, 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 that they stay fruitful, that they continue to multiply. That's the shepherd's job. The shepherd's job is to ensure that the sheep stay safe. Now, it says this. It says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Say not want. Say I shall not want. Can you remember the last time you didn't have a want? I'm not talking about a need. I'm not talking about things that you require. I'm talking about, can you remember the last time you did not have a want? 
the scripture says right here is very plain. It says, the Lord's my shepherd, number one. He's my protector. He's my guide. Uh, uh, but then it says, if he's my shepherd, if he's my protector, if he's my guide, and he's in charge of ensuring I have everything I need, the next thing it says is, I shall not have a want. And when I look across the congregation today, uh, some of us will be honest, some of us won't, but if you're honest, you will understand we are in a society where everybody has wants that typically are never quenched. Uh, uh, I need longer hair. I need to lose weight. I need to gain weight. I need a nicer car. I need more bedrooms in my house. I, are y'all hearing me? It, it always seems to be something more that we want that keeps us in a posture of not being satisfied. I believe one of the enemy's most subtle tricks is to keep God's people in a constant state of want constant state of want constantly off balance constantly reaching constantly trying to get more of something is anybody here today nothing's never good enough are y'all hearing me so then we start measuring and comparing and competing and so then this want ends up compromising our character because want slides into desire. And then what once a want becomes a desire, it becomes an infatuation. And when it becomes an infatuation, you can't have peace without it. So no matter that you got a roof over your head, you got food in your belly, you got a way to get to work, you actually have a job, even though you have all those things, you still ain't happy. Are y'all hearing me today? Those those who are single want to be married. Those who are married want to be single. What do we really, or what are we trying to do here, folks? We always are wanting. Are y'all here today? We get a, a promotion, and then we want another one, and then we want another one, and then we want another one, and then it's never enough. Um, I, I was fortunate enough to uh, 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 have a, a mentor and uh, he's, he's 85 years old, uh, very, very wealthy man, extremely, extremely wealthy man, actually. And um, we spend time together maybe once a month. And um, he, um, he drives a 14-year-old car. Um, and it was something about him from the first time I met him that always bothered me. He had this, this little uh, Timex watch that you might get from Walmart or something. And he had a rubber band tied around it, holding it in place. Now, I know that he could buy a very nice watch if he wanted. And so one day, we had some time alone, and I said, you know, uh, so-and-so, something's been bothering me ever since I met you. He said, what's that, Jay? I said, um you have a rubber band tied around this watch, why don't you just buy another watch? And he said something to me that I've never forgot, and it stuck with me. He said, Jay, he says, you're going to learn this when you get much older. He says, but this is what you need to understand. He said, true happiness and true wholeness is not what you need to live, is what you can live without. And it hit me like a ton of bricks because I always thought that those that are wealthy who live the simplest of lives were trying to be falsely humble. But the truth is that I've learned is that those that are wealthy became wealthy because they lived the simplest of lives. Because they were grounded, say grounded. When you get grounded, you get whole. And when you get grounded, when you get whole, you see clearly. And when you see clearly, you don't waste money and you don't spend money on things that really have no value. 
And so it's those who are grounded, who understand real value, therefore, they only invest in things that have more value. So their value is constantly increasing. He looked at me and he says, he says, he says, this watch works just fine. <laughs> are y'all hearing me? But it's, it's, it's for us who are constantly trying to keep up, constantly need affirmation in things and items. Are y'all hearing me? We're constantly in a state of want. Say, I shall not want. The Bible says this, go with me real quick, Philippians 4 and 10 through 13. Philippians 4 and 10 through 13. I want to pause while you're looking for that. Um, and uh, I'm way too deep into my sermon to do it, but I have to do it. I want to thank God for our veterans. I want to thank God for all of the veterans. Amen. Those who have served our country, uh, we honor you. We respect you. We thank God for you. Amen. We, our lives are so much better because of you. Amen. So thank God for our veterans. Amen. Please do something kind for a veteran on tomorrow. Amen. Philippians 4 and 10. Philippians 4 and 10. Say amen when you have it. Here's what it says. It says, but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Interesting. It says, not that I speak in respect of want. Mm. Not that I speak in respect of want. Okay? For I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therewith to be what? Content. Let me read that again. So he says, but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last uh, your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. In other words, um, I had great success, I had a great gift, I had a great anointing, but I lacked the opportunity to go to the next level. Anybody ever been there where you felt like you have more in you than opportunity in front of you? Amen. And, and so this is what it says here. He says, but I'm not speaking in respect of want. I understand what's in me, and I understand I don't have opportunity, but watch this. He says, but I'm not speaking in respect of want because I have learned how to be content. Let's assess the wholeness here. I have greatness in me no opportunity in front of me but I'm content how can you be content when you're called because when you're called and when you have greatness inside of you, and when you have the end of the thing already deposited in you, how do you be content? Say wholeness. Paul here in this scripture is explaining to us the dynamics and the paradigm shift internally that happens when someone is not speaking of want. I understand that there's more in me, but I've learned to be content. Are y'all still here? And so we have to get to a point, people of God, where as though we have everything to accomplish, we're still content in the state that we're in. Now, somebody's getting mad at me because they're like, but Pastor Jay says that God has come that we might have life and that we might have more life more abundantly. And, and the Bible says in Philippians 4 and 13 that I can do 
all things. And, and so how are you going to ask me to be content when I know God has more for me? Here's how you do it. Say wholeness. There was some great men of war in the Bible called the sons of Issachar. And the Bible lets us know that they were so mighty in battle an understanding of the times. So they were able to defeat much larger armies because they had an understanding of the times. What has you frustrated with your calling that is making you not content is very simple. You don't understand the time you're in. God does not live in time. He lives in eternity. And when he created you, he created everything that you were going to be before you were made. So he already knows your ending. That's why he says, I'm bringing you to an expected end. Expected end. Y'all got it? That's why we sing the song, you are alpha and omega. I heard one preacher say it this way. He said, God doesn't actually start until he's already finished it. <laughs> he doesn't start making it. He doesn't start making it until the end is already complete. Because there are two realms. There's the spirit realm and then there's the natural realm. The sons of Issachar are the men that understood the times. They had tapped into a cheat code in heaven that allowed them to understand, although I'm pregnant with purpose, I also understand the timing. And so, so many of us are not whole today because we are in a constant state of want. We are in a constant state of needing and wanting a timing and a season that is not recorded yet to happen in heaven. Okay? And so what gives you peace in knowing that I am gifted, talented, anointed, and called to lead, to lead the nations? And the only thing in front of me is the neighborhood. See, what that does when you don't understand the timing is that it causes you to lie down in dry pastures. Let's move, let's move real quick, real quick. Verse 2, it says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. When you are wanting something that's out of timing and out of season, watch this, you end up laying down in dry pastures instead of green pastures. What are you saying, Pastor Jay? When I lie down, it basically means that I am resting or I'm pausing or I'm taking a time of rest. Watch this. But typically, when I don't understand the season, then I feel like the season is dead. Green pastures is a typography of growth and flourishing. In other words, if the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He's causing me to rest in growth. But when I'm in a state of want, that typifies something's dead. <laughs> yeah. 
when I'm resting in growth, that means even though this season looks unproductive, it's still useful. <laughs> even though this season doesn't look like something's coming that should be coming, it's still green because I have to go through it for growth. But when I'm in want, then I rest in what I deem as unproductivity. What I deem as stagnancy. What I deem as unfruitfulness. Are y'all still with me? Then it says that I'm leading beside still waters peaceful waters. Are y'all hearing me? Peaceful waters. Let's go back. Verse 3. He what? Restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. He restoreth my soul. Somebody here today that's listening to me, I preached on last week, who has your wholeness? And there is some people here today that if you let the Lord be your shepherd, you let him lead you to green pastures, he, you let him lead you to resting in growth, peaceful waters, then what's going to happen is he's going to restore your soul. Everything that's broken, let down, destroyed, battered, beaten, bruised, the Lord's going to restore it. Somebody say restore. Okay, so y'all following me now. Now, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I'm not in desperation. I'm not reaching. I'm not reaching. I'm not trying to be anything that I can't. I understand the timing of God. When I don't want nothing, yes, there's more in me. Yes, God's going to do great things through me. Yes, I'm going to be the head and not the tail. Yes, I'm going to be the linen at the bar. I have no doubt in my mind God's going to do it. However, I also understand the timing of God. And when God wants to bring me into it because he has to make me lie down in green pastures. And so when I lay down and I rest in growth, rest in growth, he allows me to rest in my growth, seemingly like I'm not producing, seemingly like I'm not growing, but I'm still resting. I still have peace. I still have tranquility. Then he leads me beside the still waters. Okay, now watch this. When all those things are happening, my soul is getting restored. Every, everybody that let me down, every hurt, every betrayal, it begins to get restored. It begins to get healed. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Okay, now, here we go. Verse number four, I'm almost done. It says, now, yay, Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff. Now, whoever told you that when you come to God and when God begins to be your shepherd, that you won't have to walk through some things, they told you a lie. And anybody that tells you that as soon as you get saved and start coming to church, that you're no longer going to have trouble, they told you a lie. Anybody that told you that the moment you start reading your Bible and praying once a day that you would have no more trouble, they told you a lie. Because the truth of the matter is, is that even though you're saved and even though you love God, you still have to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now, here's the good news. The good news is, is that it's only a shadow of death. It's only a shadow. Tell your neighbor it's only a shadow. It's, it's only a shadow. I, I know it doesn't look good, and I know it looks unfavorable, and I know it looks like this is going to be the last last time for you, but I'm telling you today that it's only a shadow. Tell somebody else it's only a shadow. And then it says, the Bible says, I'm not going to fear. 
I'm not going to have any fear in my spirit because the people of God, you need to know the difference between a shadow and the real thing. And, uh, the Bible declared that he roars like a lion. He's not a lion. He, he, he can only do what you allow him to do in the realm of your perception. It says, I got to walk through the valley of the shadow of death. But I'm not going to fear. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to be intimidated. Are y'all hearing me today? For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff. What do they do? They comfort me. Now here's the thing you got to understand about a rod and a staff. Now what's happening so far? I've laid down in green pastures. I've been led beside the still waters. The Lord has restored my soul. Y'all still with me? Uh, uh, and then what happens is I have to walk through some seasons where there are all types of shadows of death. But the Lord gave me something to endure it. A rod and a staff. Y'all with me? It says the rod and the staff gives me comfort. Here's the thing about a rod and a staff. When the Lord gives you a rod and the Lord gives you a staff and he takes you through a valley where there's shadows of death. If you had a sword, watch this. If you had a sword, you could just swing it to kill. Y'all with me? If you had something sharp, you could just aim it at whatever you're trying to kill and kill it, right? Aim for the heart. Aim for something to kill them. The thing about a rod and a staff is that it requires precise execution. Stay with me. When I have a rod and a staff, the reason why it gives me comfort is because I've been walking so closely with God that I don't have to hit you but one time. <laughs> because the staff is designed for precision. It's not designed to be malicious. It's designed for precision. Say precision. And so, watch this. The enemies that's fighting your life, the shadows that are fighting for you, watch this, you're trying to wrestle it down with strength. God is calling you to defeat it with precision. See, there's, there's a prayer you can pray that's precise, that handles it. There's, there's a, a way you can defeat it without exerting as much energy because the Lord will teach you precision. Say precision. All right, I'm almost done. Let's see here. Now it says, the Lord, then it says, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. The Lord prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. He anoints my head, my cup runs over. Say amen, somebody. And so, I didn't been through all this. I didn't fault the enemy with my rod and my staff. And now I'm sitting at a table that the Lord prepared in the presence of mine enemies. I'm sitting at a table that the Lord prepared in the presence of my enemies. Watch this, y'all. Then it says. The Lord anointed my head. So, here's the thing you got to learn real quick. He says, I, the Lord's my shepherd, I shall not want. Then it talks about, I talked to you earlier about having opportunity but being content. Here's the thing. Many times, God will gift you several seasons before he anoints you. Okay. 
because what Paul had to learn is how to be gifted before I'm anointed and stay content. You see here, David didn't get anointed until he had went through several seasons. God even brought him to the table, put all of his enemies around him, and then says, okay, now I'm going to anoint you. Are y'all with me? Now that you're anointed is now your time. Y'all got it? When you get anointed, then it's your time. So you mean to tell me we've been through five verses of lying down in green pastures, getting your soul restored. Are y'all hearing me? Walking through the valley of the shadows of death. I've been through all of this, and it ain't even been my time yet. You mean I went through all these seasons, even got to a table, and I got all my enemies around me. And here's the thing that we don't understand about this scripture. When we say that the Lord prepared a table in the presence of my enemies, we tend to preach that and shout because we say the Lord's putting me on display in front of my enemies. Take another look. <laughs> he says, the Lord prepared a table in the presence of my enemies. So to me, if I'm at a table and my enemies are outnumbering me, that don't seem like a good table. Are y'all hearing me? But the Lord is setting you up to bless you in front of a cloud of witnesses. But are you willing to sit at the table surrounded are y'all here? By people who you know are your enemies. Okay, so I didn't, I didn't, I didn't been anointed, and now I'm at the table. Now what happens last? I'm, then I'm sitting down. It says, now, surely, goodness and mercy are gonna follow me all the days of my life. I'm sitting down. Pastor Lee, come up here with me. Uh, say, come on up here with me. Say. So y'all stand behind me. So this is my goodness. This is my mercy. Now, I want to show y'all something. All right. Now, let me get my Bible real quick. I'm going to show y'all this, and we're going home. Y'all okay? All right. So I want us to talk to y'all a little bit about how this process of wholeness works. All right. Now watch this. Y'all stay right there, okay? <laughs> We're getting ready to go. So watch this. So how many of y'all want to be whole? We're working toward our wholeness, right? Let's talk about it. All right. Verse 1, it says, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Y'all got that? So I'm walking, and the Lord is teaching me how not to want. He's teaching you, firstly, that even though as talented, as gifted, and all the things he wants to do inside of you, you have to have a season where you are content. You say, God, I'm content. Watch this. Lord, I know what you've called me to do, but in this season, I'm content. God, God, I know you have greater for me. The signs are all around me. The talent's inside of me, but in this season, I'm content. Then it says, he makes me to lie down in green pastures. Y'all with me? And so, therefore, I have to have the proper perspective of this season. 
I got to look at it the right way. I can't continue to look at it as dried up and stagnant. I got to look at it as if it's not moving, I'm still growing. He makes me lie down in green pastures. Are y'all here? And then the Bible says he leads me beside the still water. So he's leading me beside stillness and peace and tranquility. Good relationships. Are y'all hearing me? Healthy relationships. Peaceful, tranquil relationships. Are y'all hearing me? Learning to reason together with my brother and my sister. Are y'all here? Then it says this. It says, uh, watch this, y'all. It says that uh, he restores my soul. So I got to take a season to get healed. I got to take a season to get some of this stuff in me corrected. Are y'all hearing me? I got to stop blaming everybody else and moving from city to city trying to get it right. I got to get it right in me. Are y'all hearing this? So he's, I'm going to allow God to restore my soul. Then it says, he leads me down the path of righteousness for his name's sake. I got to have a righteous lifestyle. Y'all still here? Watch this, y'all. Now, after I've got all this together, he's going to then allow me to walk through a valley. And in this valley, it ain't bad enough that it's a valley. In the valley, there is a shadow of death. A replica of death. Something that feels like death, but it's not really death. Something that you feel like you can die in. <laughs> Something you feel like it's time that you just can't take it this one. I can't do this one. I, you know, I have been through too much. This is the last straw. Are y'all here? But the Lord says, that's just a shadow of death because I'm not going to fear it. I'm not going to be afraid. I'm not going to fear any evil because God, through all of this, has taught me how to fight. He's given me a rod and a staff. Are y'all hearing me? To comfort me. Because he's taught me precision. He's taught me that I wrestle not against flesh and blood. Are y'all hearing me? But I'm fighting against darkness and spiritual places. Go to the next scripture. And then, now, I finally feel like I'm starting to get over some things. And then right at the last minute, I'm brought to a table. And I look around, and I thought they were friends. But I'm looking around, and it's my enemies. The Lord says, now I'm ready to anoint you. <laughs> I, I, I've allowed you to endure all of this to bring you to a table in front of your enemies. Let them laugh at you. Let them talk about you. Let them not support you. Let them turn their back on you. Are y'all hearing me? And you sitting right there, right in the middle of them. And they just having the best of times laughing at you. Huh. Lord says, okay. Now you're ready. Sounds a little bit like Jesus. Right before he took his crown, he was at a table prepared by his father. I need somebody to get this. And it's that last meeting between you and what's in you to decide who am I going to be? Who am I going to be? Am I going to reduce myself to the conversation at the table? Because you have to know at a table with all your enemies, the conversation ain't good. Who am I going to be? Because I'm sat at the head of the table, but everybody that got something to say is something negative. So you make your mind up, like David. I'm going to endure this. 
I'm going to I'm going to be whole. I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. And he's led me this far. And even though I'm surrounded by my enemies, I'm going to endure. So then what happens is the Lord says, now you're ready. I'm going to anoint you. And now I want y'all to put your hands on my shoulder. So when he anointed me, he says, I'm going to not just anoint you in front of your enemies. I'm going to give you some company for your next trip. He says, surely, goodness, on my left side, mercy, on my right side. He says, now, next time you go around, so, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He leadeth me beside, come on, come on. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Y'all got it? He says, he maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yet through the valley of the shadow of death. This time I'm walking through it, but I got goodness and I got mercy. And they ready to fight for me. They ready to fight with me. Are y'all here? Are y'all here today? And it says, I will fear no evil. Are y'all hearing this? I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. And thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And wherever I go, they're going with me. For the rest of the days of my life, goodness and mercy, they're going with me. I am covered. I am blessed. I, are y'all hearing me? I am anointed. No matter where I go, what season you find me in, I'm going to be covered by goodness and mercy. They're following me all the days of my life. I wish you would just tell somebody. I wish you would grab somebody and tell them goodness and mercy are following you. Tell them goodness and mercy are following you. Tell them goodness and mercy are following you. Doesn't matter where you go. Doesn't matter.